The launch of the Artemis I mission in mid-November was spectacular, and NASA's Orion spacecraft has performed nearly flawlessly ever since. If all goes as anticipated, Orion will splash down in the calm seas off the California coast this weekend. So the question for NASA is when can we expect an encore? Realistically, a follow-up Artemis I is probably two years away. And most likely, Artemis II missions won't happen before early 2025, although NASA's not giving up hope on launching humans into deep space in 2024. It may seem strange that there's such a long gap. After all, with that flight in November, the SLS rocket has now demonstrated capability. And should Orion return to Earth safely, it would validate the calculations of engineers who designed and built its heat shield. Should it really take more than two years to finish building a second rocket and spacecraft and complete the certification of life support systems inside Orion? The short answer is no, and the reason for the long gap is absolutely absurd. So what is it? Well, let's expose everything about that in today's episode of Alpha Tech. It all goes back to a decision made about eight years ago to plug a $100 million budget hole in the Orion program. In 2014, senior officials at NASA and Orion's primary contractor, Lockheed Martin, needed to fill a budget hole. At the time, NASA was spending $1.2 billion per year developing the Orion spacecraft, and while it was making progress on the design, there were still challenges. NASA's exploration plans at the time were substantially different from the Artemis program of today. Nominally, the agency was building Orion and the SLS rocket as part of a journey to Mars. But there was no clear-cut plan on how to get there and no well-defined mission for Orion to fly. One key difference is NASA only planned to fly the original version of the SLS rocket known as Block 1 a single time. After that initial mission, the agency planned to upgrade the rocket's upper stage, making a version of the rocket known as Block 1B. Because that variant was taller and more powerful than Block 1, it required significant modifications to the rocket's launch tower. NASA engineers estimated it would take about three years of work after that initial SLS launch to complete and test the reconstructed tower. By not needing to build two dozen avionics boxes for the second flight of Orion, the program closed the $100 million budget hole. They estimated it would take about two years to recertify the flight hardware. And schedule-wise, they'd have nearly a year to spare while work was being done on the launch tower. The plan then changes. NASA planned to launch the first SLS and Orion mission, originally known as Exploration Mission 1, in 2017. A second mission, carrying humans on board Orion in a test flight, was due to follow three years later on the larger rocket. Because the gap was so long, political pressure began to grow on NASA officials to close it. As delays mounted for Exploration Mission 1, NASA officials decided it would indeed be best to build a second launch tower. They estimated it would cost $300 million. Building a second launch tower, the officials reasoned, would allow for several flights of the Block 1 version of the SLS rocket. It would protect them from the inevitable delays with the Block 1B upgrade of SLS. By 2018, outside safety advocates began adding weight to NASA's proposal for a second launch tower, saying that the 33-month gap would raise concerns about launch readiness. In 2019, Congress decided that NASA should build a second launch tower for the Block 1B version of the SLS rocket and allocated the funding NASA requested $383 million. And this has proven to be a huge fiasco. The primary contractor, Bechtel, is years late and the project's now estimated to cost at least $1 billion. The absolute earliest the project will be completed, says NASA Inspector General Paul Martin, is November 2026. However, because NASA ultimately decided to build this second launch tower, it's free to use the original one for multiple SLS launches. Despite some damage to the tower after the Artemis 1 launch in November, officials said it would be prepared before it's needed for the Artemis 2 mission. That put Orion and its avionics boxes on the clock. Eyes are now on Orion. As part of the plan to build a second launch tower, NASA decided to fly three missions of the Block 1 version of the SLS rocket. These became the first three Artemis missions, the first an uncrewed test of the vehicles, then a crewed mission to fly to the moon, and then finally a lunar landing with Artemis III later this decade. 
After this, it's possible that Artemis IV would fly on an upgraded version of the rocket if the launch tower and new exploration upper stage are ready. Howard Hugh, who became the Orion program manager in February and previously served as deputy, has been grappling with the avionics box issue for a long time. Accordingly, he sought to accelerate the production of the avionics boxes needed for Orion. Despite the effort, however, the Orion team still needs to recover eight avionics boxes from Artemis I for use on Artemis II. No one is certain how long recovering the avionics boxes from Orion will take. In an annual report published in November, Martin said the process would take more than two years. Hughes said it was too early to determine a schedule for repurposing the avionics boxes. He said that NASA and Lockheed learned a lot from the processing of the Orion spacecraft for Artemis I, and they're working to optimize that workflow for Artemis II. A silver lining? Every month of schedule slippage is costly to NASA. Each Artemis mission consisting of an SLS rocket, Orion spacecraft, service module, and ground system has a cost of $4.1 billion, according to Martin. Assuming an annual mission cadence, it's responsible to estimate that every month of delay, for whatever reason, costs $341 million. So NASA's decision to save $100 million last decade could easily result in a billion or more in losses today. Still, it's difficult to put too much blame on Kurosik and other NASA Lockheed officials for good faith decisions made back in 2014 and 15. They could not have known that Congress would decide years later to build a second launch tower. Moreover, there's a hidden benefit of an Artemis II schedule slip that NASA officials are reluctant to discuss publicly. This has to do with a sore spot regarding Artemis. NASA struggled to reach a regular cadence of missions. Before the end of the decade, NASA would like the Orion spacecraft and SLS rocket to be capable of launching a human mission to the moon once a year to establish a baseline for lunar exploration. It's generally believed that a lower cadence than this is unhealthy for the agency's workforce and leads to a lack of focus and attention to detail. That's not a criticism, just a reality when you're flying infrequently. NASA would have at least a two-year gap between Artemis 1 and 2, with December 2024 being a realistic no earlier than date for the first human spaceflight. It's not great, but the bigger worry for some NASA planners is that Artemis 3 is much further out. It relies not just on Orion and the SLS rocket, but on a human landing system and new spacesuits for the lunar surface. Publicly, NASA is still holding to the possibility of launching Artemis 3. Yes, the lunar landing mission in 2025, but that's wholly unrealistic. If we're being honest, a good estimate for the launch of Artemis 3 is likely 2028. Therefore, if Artemis 2 slips into 2025, there'll be a longer gap between the first and second mission, but a shorter gap between Artemis 2 and 3, maybe about three years each. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.